Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my new subscribers. I'm so grateful for you all. Today we're going to work on this cute beaded hobo clutch and here are my tools for today. We're going to be using this Aunt Lydia's Crochet Thread Fashion 3. It is a category one. The name of the yarn is a scarlet. Sorry, the thread is a scarlet. It is a category one super fine. Here you can use a number three or a number four or a 3.5 or seven 3.75 millimeter hook. So I'm going to use some red butterflies, some black butterflies, and some round beads. I have my open eye needle here my three millimeter hook and a stitch marker so let's begin so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and thread our needle just go ahead and spread your open eye needle apart and add your thread you want to have a decent sized tail so that you can weave in your ends later on and now you can just go ahead and add your beads. So the way that you want to add your beads is you want to add your first beads last. So I'm going to add these round beads first because I want them to come at the end further up at the top of the project. So I'm going to add the gold ones first. And then I'm going to add the butterflies next now you don't have to do this the way that I'm doing it here you can put your beads in any sequence that you want to but you want to make sure that you have all your beads on there so that you don't have to cut your thread and then start over again so now I have all of my beads on here where I'm putting all of them on here give me a moment to do this when you're adding these charms on here, your butterfly charms, because they're technically not beads, only the round ones are, the black and red ones are charms. So when you're adding your charms on here, you want to make sure that your charms are facing your finger. The front portion of the charms are facing your fingers. So I'm going to finish adding these on here. To keep your beads from rolling around, you can sit them on a towel that will keep them from rolling around. There is a bead mat that they sell that um, craft store sells, but it's unnecessary. Just use a towel. So now again, when you're adding your beads, I'm going to add my black, but my black butterflies first. Make sure that the front of your butterflies are facing towards the back. I am doing this in the front. I completely did this wrong, but I'm going to show you how to fix that if you put the beads in the wrong direction. So I'm going to continue putting these beads on here. Remember, you're putting them on towards the back. I'm actually going to grab some more round beads because I want to have more beads going towards the top of my project and I want to add some in between these butterflies as well so I'm going to add two butterflies and then I'm going to put a bead I'm going to add a black butterfly and a red butterfly and then I will add a bead remember to turn your charms around the other way the back side should be facing your fingers when you slide it on here not the way that I'm doing it here. However, if you do put it on backwards by mistake, there's a way to fix that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to keep stringing these beads onto here, these charms and these beads on here. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I have all of my beads on here now. I'm going to remove my needle and I'm going to start off with a magic circle. Now the reason I'm making a magic circle is because the magic circle is adjustable so that you can put as many stitches as you want to and it doesn't look crowded. And also if you chain five and then slip stitch, once you come around with your stitches, 
um, you'll leave. It'll have like a little bit of a bump there at the end. So I like the magic ring, the magic circle, because you can adjust it and it doesn't leave a bit of a bump in the middle. So once you've made your magic circle, now if you don't know how to make a magic circle, I do have a tutorial. Once you've made your magic circle, go ahead and chain one. And let's start adding our stitches to our magic circle. So go ahead and yarn over. This project is only half double crochets. So we're going to make 10 half double crochets in this middle here into your magic circle. And if you are beginning at crochet, I also have an absolute beginner's tutorial where I show you how to make the basic stitches. Um, and it also has abbreviations. So I'm going to go ahead and continue making my half double crochets. Make 10 half double crochets into your loop and I'll be back. Go ahead and pause if you need to. Okay, so I now have my 10 half double crochets going around. Go ahead and pull on that tail to go ahead and cinch everything together. <clears throat> and make sure you do it nice and tight so that that hole is completely closed. So now once you have your 10 half double crochets, go ahead and slip stitch into the first stitch. I'm just trying to grab my yarn here, get everything together. Go ahead into that first stitch with a slip stitch and chain one. You're going to go into each of your half double crochets with the two half double crochets. So go right back into that same space where you slip stitch and make two half double crochets. Then go over to your next stitch and make two half double crochets. And just repeat this all the way around. It's kind of like a beanie pattern. Um, so we're going to do some increases until we get to the size that we need and go from there. So I'm going to keep making my half double crochets and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so we're at the end of the row. You should have 20 half double crochets. Go ahead and slip stitch into that first stitch. And chain one. Now we're going to increase again. What we're going to do is we're going to go into this first stitch with one half double crochet. And what we're doing is so that when we meet at the end, we don't have to continue using a stitch marker. So um, for this row here, we're going to slip stitch. But after this row, we're not going to slip stitch anymore. So go into your first stitch with one half double crochet and then go into the next stitch with two half double crochets. Now I know normally we go into the first stitch with two half double crochets, but I want to not use a slip stitch anymore. So in order to come closer to that first double crochet here, I'm going to closer to the end, I'm going to add one double crochet in the first stitch and then two double crochets into the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch and then two double crochets in the next stitch and just do this all the way around. When you start off with an uneven number, you will end with an even number. So when you start off with one double crochet, one half double crochet in that first stitch and you come to the end, you should have two half double crochets for the last stitch. So keep making these around. Remember, you're going to start in that first half double crochet with one half double crochet. I mean, start in the first stitch with one half double crochet and then go on from there. And I'm going to meet you at the end of the row when I get closer. Okay, so now I'm at the end of the row and I'm at that last stitch. So we're going to put two half double crochets into that stitch there. And as you can see, I'm much closer to that first half double crochet instead of being a little further back. Now I can just go right into my next stitch with my uh, into my next stitch with my half double crochet. So yarn over and go right into that stitch 
and make two half double crochets, we are still increasing. We are going to increase up until row six. So in this second row, this next row, sorry, go ahead and make your first two half double crochets. Make sure that you put your stitch marker into that first stitch before you continue or you will get lost. And I like these little thin stitch markers because they work really well with very fine thin yarn. So now in your next stitch, you're going to make one half double crochet. If I can get it to act right. And now in the next stitch, another half double crochet. And in your next stitch, two half double crochets. And this is your repeat. I think this is row four. Yes, this is row four. So in row four, you start off with two half double crochets in the first stitch, and then one half double crochet into the next two stitches, two half double crochets into the next stitch. So I'm going to meet you at the end. Keep doing this all the way around, repeating this pattern. One half double crochet. One half double crochet into the next. And two half double crochets into the next stitch. And I will meet you back at the beginning when I get closer to that stitch marker. Okay, we're back at that stitch marker. So now in this last stitch, we're going to make one half double crochet. And that's the end of the row. So now remove your stitch marker and move on into the next row, which is row five. So go into that first stitch with two half double crochets. And then you're going to make one half double crochet into the next three stitches. Make sure that you're putting back that stitch marker in there so you don't lose your place. And in the next three stitches, you're going to make one half double crochet. That is the pattern for row five. Two half double crochets into the first stitch. One half double crochet into the next three. And then two half double crochets into the next stitch. So repeat this all the way around and I'm going to meet you again when I get back to that stitch marker. I'll be back. Okay, so now let's continue. I'm getting closer to the end of the row here and I'm making my last few double crochets. When you get to the end, you should have three spaces and one half double crochet goes into each of those spaces in stitches. Sorry. So this is row five. Now we're going to begin. We're going to go into row six, but we're going to increase in a different way. So remove your stitch marker. And you're going to go into that first stitch with two half double crochets. And then you're going to put one half double crochet into the next 10 stitches. So we'll go ahead and put your stitch marker back into that first stitch. And now make one half double crochet into the next 10 stitches. This is an increase, but it's more of a broader increase. So instead of having like we did with the previous row, we did three single I mean three half double crochets we're going to make 10 so <clears throat> if we were going to do it the normal way in the sixth row we would make two half double crochets into the first stitch and then one half double crochet into the next four but we're going to skip all that and make two half double crochets into the first stitch and then one half double crochet into the next 10 stitches after you've made your 10 half double crochets, make two half double crochets into the next stitch and just repeat this. Now we're going to repeat that for three rows. So you're going to do that for row six, seven, and eight. All of those rows, you will start with two double crochets into the first stitch and then 
10 across, one half double crochet into the next 10, and then two half double crochets into the next stitch. Do that for three rows. So I'm going to continue doing that, and I will be back when I have my additional three rows. Please remember, when you get back to the beginning of your row, make sure that you have two double crochets, two half double crochets into that first stitch in the beginning of your row of each of those rows, six, seven, and eight, and I'll be back. Okay, so now we have our eight rows, and we're not going to increase any more. We should have, you should have 66 half double crochets going all the way around. We're stepping into row 9, 10, 11, and 12. You're going to make four rows of half double crochets, nothing but half double crochets. Make sure when you make that first half double crochet to add your stitch marker in there so you can keep your place. Now for four more rows, go ahead and make one half double crochet into each row. We're just building up now, making our hobo clutch a little uh, taller. So just keep making your rows going around. Four more rows. You should have 66 half double crochets going all the way around. And I'm going to meet you when I have those additional four rows going around. Remember to put your stitch marker back into that first stitch so that you do not lose your place. So I'm going to make my rows and I'll be back. You can pause if you need to so we can you can continue to crochet along with me. I'll be back. Okay, so now I have my 12 rows here of my half double crochets. Again, you should have 66 half double crochets going all the way around. Go ahead and remove your stitch marker. Now we're going to start incorporating our beads. So I don't, I'm going to have a big of a gap in between these, uh, not too big of a gap in between the beads at first. So normally I'll start the first row with just um, six stitches in between. That's what we're going to do here. I'm sorry, five in between. So I'm just grabbing my beads. I'm going to be right back because I have to adjust these so that they slide properly up and down the yarn. <laughs> Give me a moment. Okay, so I have my beads adjusted here. So now I'm going to begin with my first bead. It's going to start in the first stitch. So go ahead and yarn over and pull your bead up. Yarn over again and go right into that next stitch with your hook. Go in and pull up your loop. And now you're going to slip stitch the first two chains together, the first two loops together. And then yarn over and make your half double crochet. Now, if this is going too fast for you, I do have a tutorial on how to do this, how to add beads to your project. It's not an actual project. It's just a swatch. So now I'm going to half double crochet, one half double crochet into the next five stitches. Once I get to my sixth stitch, I'm going to yarn over. Just grabbing a bead here. Make sure you keep your beads nice and close. I did too many stitches there. I made six instead of five. I only want five after that bead because we're going to put our bead into that sixth stitch. So once you get to your sixth stitch, go ahead and pull up your charm. This is one of the butterfly charms. It's the red one. Now, as you can see, I do have it backwards, but I'm going to show you how to fix that so that it's facing forward. So go ahead and yarn over and pull your bead up. Go ahead and secure it with your finger. And go into that next stitch. Yarn over and pull up your loop. Now you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, the next loop. And then yarn over and make your half double crochet. Now, when we go into the next row, I will show you how to adjust this so that if it is backwards, it will stay facing forward. So now you're going to make another five half double crochets. We're putting a bead in every sixth stitch. 
So make one half double crochet into the next five stitches. Now go ahead and grab a bead. The, be the next bead should be a red one. I'm finagling with this thing again. Hold on, I'll be back. Okay, I got it together here. I think this is like the, the most annoying part of this is, is getting these beads to act right. So go ahead and yarn over, grab your bead, yarn over again, go into that stitch, yarn over and pull up your loop and slip stitch into the first stitch, into the first loop. I'm sorry, I keep calling them stitches, they're loops. I messed up. <laughs> Just. <laughs> It can be quite annoying, but as you do it, you get used to it. And as I always say, practice makes progress. So just keep practicing this and go ahead and yarn over again. Go into that stitch and pull up your loop and go ahead and slip stitch into that next loop. Yarn over and make your half double crochet. And just keep doing this. So make one half double crochet into the next five. And if you need to slow it down, guys, you are more than welcome to do that. That is in the settings of the video. You can slow it down if I'm going too fast. Or you can go to my other video, which just focuses on adding your beads. So I'm going to put my five half double crochets here, one in each of the next five stitches. And I'm going to grab my bead again and continue on. So just keep making your stitches round and adding your beads. If you need to go back, you can do that. Return back or push it back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to keep going with these crazy beads. And I will meet you back at the beginning of the row where I have my first bead. And I'll show you what to do from there and show you how to secure these beads. I'll be back. Just showing you one more time on the camera before I go. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so we're back at the beginning of the row and this is my first bead of the row. Now, you can add a stitch marker if you want to so that you can remember what that first row looks like. But I'm going to go into this bead. Now, if, you're, if you put your bead on backwards, I'm going to show you how to flip it around the other way. So... Um, go ahead and yarn over and in that same space that you have your bead in that same loop you're going to put your hook in there and then you're going to put your hook into the next stitch yarn over and pull through those loops yarn over and make your half double crochet and that's going to keep your bead facing to the front and it's going to flip it around so now you're going to do this again make five half double crochets going around I mean one half double crochet in the next five stitches and then again when you get to that bead make sure that your bead is facing towards the front so let's say it's facing towards the back like that you just go ahead and flip it over and to secure it in that place yarn over and go right into that same loop that your butterfly is attached to Go into the next loop. Oop, I slipped out. I just want to show you what that loop is. The loop that's holding your charm. Go into that with your hook right in between. And then go into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull through those loops. Yarn over and pull through all three, making your half double crochet. And those charms will stay facing to the front now and they're more secure. So again, make another one half double crochet into the next five stitches. Keep doing that across and all the way around, making sure that you're securing those beads. Now, once you've done this row here, this is considered row two after the beads. This is considered row one after your beads. So you're not going to count your bead row. But once you've done this row here, this is your first, first row of four. So you're going to make four rows in between that. 
once you've made this row here and secured your beads down, making those five half double crochets in the middle in between each of those beads, you're just going to make half double crochet rows all the way around because we want to have some space in between those beaded rows. So once I've made this row here, this counts as that first row after the beaded row. You're going to make five of the four, sorry, four of those rows without any beads, just half double crochets going all the way around. So I'm at that next bead and I'm making sure that it is secured. Of course, with a round bead, you don't have to worry about the front or the back. So I'm going to continue doing this around all the way around and I'm going to meet you when we get back to that very first bead of the round. I'll be back. Okay, so now we're back. Now we're going to go ahead and continue making some rows, some half double crochet rows. You're just going to make one half double crochet into each stitch going all the way around. You don't have to mess with your charms or your beads. Just four rows of half double crochets going around and you should still have 66 half double crochets going all the way around. So I'm going to continue making these half double crochets and I'm going to meet you back at the beginning. If you need to add a stitch marker, you can do that. Okay, so now I have my four additional rows and I'm loving how this is coming back, coming back, <laughs> how it's turning out. The butterflies are nice and even and facing the front like they're supposed to be. So now we're going to go into another row of beads here. So just like we did before, we started in the beginning with some beads. We're going to do the same thing. So now, now you're going to go into the next 10 half double crochets with one half double crochet. I actually made a booboo here, so hold on. Okay, so we're supposed to add a bead to this first stitch here. So I've fixed my beads. And now I'm going to pull up this black charm, yarn over, and go ahead and pull up that charm. And go right into your next stitch. And make your slip stitch. Slip those two first chains together, first two loops together. I don't think I was in the camera, so let me do that again. Okay, go ahead and yarn over and add your bead. Yarn over again, go into your next stitch and pull up your loop. Slip stitch into that second loop. Yarn over and pull through all three. And remember, I put my beads on the wrong way the first time, but just like I did in the first row here, the first row of beads. I'm going to do the same thing, but for now, I'm just going to continue. I'm going to make one half double crochet into the next 10 stitches across. And then I'll add another bead. That's going to be your pattern for this row. Put your bead in and then make one half double crochet into the next nine half double crochets. I'd said 11 before, but it's nine. Make one half double crochet into the next nine stitches. And then in your 10th stitch, you want to put your bead in there. So pull your bead up. And again, you can make your beads random. You don't have to make them the way that I'm doing here. You can put them random however you want to, however many spaces you want to put in between. So yarn over, pull up your bead, Go ahead into that next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then go ahead and slip stitch. And it's okay if your bead is toward the back because you can always push it to the front. And once you make that half double crochet, it will secure it in place. So I'm trying this again because I fumbled it. So now go ahead and slip stitch. And then yarn over again and make your half double crochet. And just continue doing this around. And then in between each row, 
um, you're going to make four rows. So when you make your row of your charms and your beads, after that, you're going to make four rows, four additional rows of just half double crochets so that we can get the bag, the clutch nice and tall. So I'm going to keep making these around. I'm making my nine half double crochets. And then in the 10th place, I will add my bead. So I'm going to keep doing this and I will be back. Okay, so I'm back and I have six additional rows, 66 half double crochets going around, and you should have a total of 24 rows. So now we're going to go ahead and continue. Now we're going into our shell stitch pattern. So in we're going to make some half double crochets. So you're going to make five half double crochets. Make sure when you make your second half double crochet that you put your stitch marker in the first one so you can remember where you are. It really is isn't necessary but you want to know where you start off and where you finish so once you've made your half double crochets going across we're going to make our shell stitches now shell stitches has seven double crochets so I'm going to make my first three double crochets and now I'm going to add a bead on my fourth double crochet so let me grab my beads So now, just like we did with the half double crochet, we'll do the same thing with the double crochet. Go ahead and yarn over and pull up your bead. Yarn over again. Go back into that stitch where you made your other double crochets. Make your slip stitch. And then make your double crochet. So yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through two. Now go back into that same stitch with another three double crochets and there is your shell stitch. Now you want to make five half double crochets in between each of your shell stitches. So I'm making my five half double crochets. This is two. three, four, it's taking forever just to make five half double crochets. <laughs> okay, so after you've made your five half double crochets, I'm about to make, s now go into the next stitch, sorry, with three double crochets. Here's my third one. Now add your bead and go ahead and yarn over, add your bead, yarn over again and go back into that same stitch with another three double crochets. And this is the pattern all the way around. So once I've made my shell stitch here, after I add my bead, that's a uh, double crochet number four. Now I'm going to add three more double crochets into that same space. And once I've made my seven double crochets with my bead in there, now you're going to make another five half double crochets, one half double crochets into each stitch. And then when you get to your sixth one, you just start over again with your shell stitch, which is three double crochets. Add your bead for the fourth double crochet and then another three double crochets into the same stitch. So just repeat this all the way around. I'm going to keep going. Once you've done your last shell stitch, just um, do the remaining in your half double crochets. But I'm going to show you that in a minute. I'm going to keep going and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm closer to the end of the row now. And as you can see, I have all my beads here in the middle. Make sure you want to have seven double crochets in there. Now I'm going to finish off these last few stitches with some half double crochets. And 
and in that last stitch of that shell stitch well not the last one but the very first one you're just going to go right into there and slip stitch and go ahead and cut your yarn off so the next thing we're going to do once I've cut this yarn off is I'm going to make our string the little tassel that closes up the bag make sure you cut this off at a good length so that you can weave that in and when I come back we're going to go ahead and start on the um, the tie for this wristlet I'll be back okay so we're going to go ahead and make the tie which is quite simple we're just going to make a row just going to make some chains here i made about a hundred chains you don't have to do so many if you don't want to but i also like to have a little bit of length on the string when you pull it i want to have a little bit of length on that tassel when i close it for my beads so i'm going to make 100 chains you can do more or less if you want and i'll be back okay so i have my 100 chains here and remember you want to have a good long tail on there so you can add your beads at the end i'm going to head and use my open eye needle here you don't have to use your open eye needle you can use um your regular yarn needle you don't have to use a bead needle to do this i don't know what i was thinking but it is what it is so you want to go in underneath in this bottom row underneath your shells so what I did was I went through the first first front. This is the gap in between the first and the last bead. So right in that gap, it doesn't have to be perfect. Our purpose is just to get this chain in and out of these stitches without stretching it or um, hurting your stitches in any way. And I'm just going in and out. You can skip a few stitches you don't have to go into every stitch it makes it easier to draw clothes when you just skip over some stitches now i'm putting my needle underneath that shell right into that hole there and just making my way all the way around make sure you pull it through but don't pull too tight just loose enough so that it can go through and then just do this all the way across. Make sure that when you go back through, when you come out of the front and then go into the next stitch through the back, make sure that you're going into that loop, that hole that's right up under your shell stitch. So I'm going to keep doing this. Again, use your darning needle. Don't be extra like me and use the bead needle. Go ahead and use your darning needle. It's faster. So I will be back. Okay, so I'm closer to the end now, I'm making my final couple of loops here, coming back in through the front so I can finish that off. And I put one, I put the needle into the stitch before the beginning. So I left one stitch empty and I put it in the one before that. Right into the one before that and I just skipped one stitch just so we can draw a little easier and i'm going to take this needle out see why you don't need this open eye needle you're not really well i'll take that back you do have to use it for beads to add your beads on there so this is what she looks like so far i'm going to go ahead and add the beads on there just want to make sure that the string is nice and even and that's what it looks like when you draw it closed you have all of your gold beads your round beads on the outside so let me go ahead and add my beads to the end of this and show you how i tied that off and again you don't have to make your chain so long if you don't want to so i'm going to add just two beads on each of my strands here pull that bead down and go ahead and make your knot you don't want it to be a big knot but you don't want it to be too small that it slips, that the bead slips right through the knot, past the knot. So I'm going to make this knot here. I'm actually going to do it twice. And it took me a second to, to get this together because I want the knot to be as close to the bead as possible. So if anyone has a better way to do this, please let me know in the comments box because I have no idea how to make it any simpler than that but I just 
made sure that when I was when that knot was closing, that I was close to that bead so that it doesn't come out. So I'm going to do that one more time just to secure it in there. Okay. Nice and tight and nice and safe. So it's not going to slide off once you begin using it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one and I'll be back. Okay, so this is what she's looking like so far. Isn't it so cute? I am in love with this um, this wristlet here. All the beads are nice and lined up and it just comes together so pretty. So we're going to go ahead and work on the strap. Okay, so for my strap, I didn't really make it that long. I think I did either 20 or 30 rows of uh, 20 or 30 chains. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to make my 20 chains here and I'll be back. We'll go from there. Okay, so here's my 30 chains. I'm going to make 31 so I can have exactly 30 chains. Skip one chain and then the next chain, make your half double crochets. And you can do as many rows as you want to. I'm going to make one row of this um, so I can show you how to sew it into, the, uh, into your end. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back. Okay, so I have my 20 half double crochets here. Now, I made a booboo because on the other side, I didn't make my string long enough. But because it's for our tutorial, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. I can always fix it for myself later. So chain one and pull your string through. Make sure you make your um, yarn, your string, your thread long enough so that you can weave it in. So let me get myself together and I'll be back and we'll start. Okay, so this part does not have to be perfect. You can put the straps where you want to put them, but your goal is to make sure that they're crossing over and not crossing in the front. You want to make sure it's crossing over on the sides so that it will hang properly. I'm going to get this together and I'm going to show you how I just did one side and then I'll do the rest of it off camera. But you want to make sure that your strap is the front part is facing towards you and you're just going to weave in your end so as you can see I finally decided to use my yarn needle here um, you're just going to go ahead and weave in those ends weave it in and out of that shell stitch if I can get this together okay so now you just hang your strap hold your strap to the back of the shell let me figure this out. I'll be right back. Okay, so now you want to take your darning needle and go ahead and slip it into towards the back in that hole up underneath the shell stitch. And you're just going to go back and forth with your hook, with your needle in and out of your stitches. Of course, you can naturally, you can skip stitches, however it is that you do that. But I just put it in, made sure that the strap is attached to it as well. And go ahead and pull through and then just come back through the other way. You can sew it however it is that you want to sew it. I'm not good with sewing. I don't even know the name of the stitches that I'll be using half the time. But um, I'm not an expert at it. So I just go in and out um, making sure that my yarn is going behind that bead around to the other side. Um, but again, you do it how you want. So I'm going to continue doing this. And when I come back, I will have our final wristlet, our hobo wristlet, our beaded hobo wristlet. <laughs> and I'll have it all together and show you what that looks like. I'll be right back. Pause if you need to so you can continue with me. All right. So here we are. Here is our strap and we have our little string in the front, our little drawstring in the front to bring everything together and your beads are poking out on the side. I am in love with this right here. Now, I think it would be good. You know, you don't want to put anything heavy in here, maybe some money, maybe your lipstick or your eyeliner or something like that, your sanitizer, nothing too heavy because this is a lightweight yarn. It is fairly strong, but you don't want to stretch your workout. 
So this is mainly just for little small dainty things. You can wear it to church or, you know, a cute little gathering. So um, we're done here. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit just so you can see what that looks like even more. I think it came out so cute. And the beige one, the other one is just as cute. Um, so make this bag. It is very easy to make. It's very quick. You follow my tutorial on how to make those beads, how to get those beads in there first. So you'll be used to it. I want to thank you for watching this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Cam Tai Handmade Crochet. Have a great day. Bye-bye.